Hi everyone, it's me Darlene. I am here with quite the video. I have a bunch of different things that I want to touch on and I'm going to try to do that in the least boring way possible. <laughs> First of all, I'm on my way to Goodwill because it's Sunday and I haven't been for the past two weekends because I was out on Sundays those past two weekends. But on my way there, I know there's no shade there, I thought I would stop here at my apartment complex and do the video in the shade. And it's weird because, see, if I lean in, and sometimes I lean into you guys, I just, I don't know, I like to do that. And then there's the sun issue. So, okay, let's get started. First, my night out. I'm going to make this quick. It was at Neil's again, Six Feet Thunder. Now, when I mention venues and bands from now on, I'm going to link to their Facebook pages or whatever I think is their best social media. Um, and so if you want to go check those things out, you can. I'm going to have a lot of stuff now in the description, so always go check the description. If you don't know how to do that, push on something and it'll open. <laughs> I don't know. Sometimes it's under the video, but then other times, depending on your device, it'll be on the side, on the sidebar. So I went out with Derek, just Derek, and I knew quite a few people there. So I knew that was good. The place was packed, unlike the night before, because we had a storm and it was pretty much empty, but it was packed. I knew the band would be good. Uh, they're members from other bands and they get together for this particular band and I just knew I was going to love it. Uh, my only issue was I was heartbroken for much of the night because there just wasn't a good dancing crowd. There was people dancing. Derek's like, just get up, get up and go dance with them. I'm like, I'm a little fussy still. You know what I mean? I don't want to dance with drunk women, but I ended up kind of dancing with drunk women. But, and, um, uh, you know, and it just looked like whoever was dancing, it looked like two people. And Derek mentioned, because I love Alice in Chains, the man in the box. I'm new to that song, even though it's like, I don't know, 20, 30 years old, at least 20. And I'm like, you know, if I ever hear that in a club, I'm going to go insane. And Derek says, I think they do it. I'm like, they don't. Don't say that. Now, by the second set, I'm petrified. I have to find people I'm comfortable getting up with to dance with. And I'm so afraid that the man in the box is indeed going to come up and I'm going to be like uh, absolutely devastated if I can't get up and dance to it. And after a little while, I hear the first couple of notes. Now, Derek is sitting at a different table. I'm with um, some uh, the wife of the drummer and he's at another table with Jeff and other friends. I mean, I stand up and I'm like, oh. and Derek's like, go, go, mom, go, just go. And I was like, he wanted me so much to be able to dance to that song. He knew how important it was to me. And Danny's in Nashville, so I couldn't have Danny to dance with me. So uh, I look at the stage and four people are walking up. They look like they're in a little group. Three women, one guy. And I was like, those are my people. So I just got up on that dance floor and I was like, you know, like signaling, can I join you guys? And I had the fucking time of my life during that song. I, I just can't believe I got to experience something so awesome. I mean, the music, it just, it just completely changes who I am. <laughs> And I think it shows when I'm on the dance floor. But I just loved it. I loved it. I was like, if this is the only time I dance tonight, it was worth fucking coming out. But that little group of people, uh, I think I might have danced with them again during the second set a few times. Third set, I stayed in my seat for the first song. They got up and I danced the entire rest of the third set. Yes, wet hair. I'm not like at Hadley's. That was insane. I was, my hair was so wet that I was able to wring it out. I wasn't to that point yet. So I had a very, very good night. And then we hung out after. I was tired, but I knew I wasn't driving, so I didn't care because I went with Derek because he knew he wanted to stay. And he talked to some people. Got home at 20 minutes to 2 that night. The night before was 10 minutes to 2, so I, I got home earlier. Okay, so that was my night. Uh, again, I will link below, and yeah, if you're in the area and you've never seen uh, Six Feet Thunder, you need to see them. I have, a, I have a, a little list here of stuff I have to talk about. What do I want to do next? 
Oh yes, haha, <laughs> this is a big one. It's been on my mind for a year and uh, I tried to do it a few months ago and I kind of failed, but I cut it down. I'm talking about my fabric business. First of all, today, this is March 26, right now it's 2023, and it's the one year anniversary of my mother's death. Now, I want to pretend that my mother wants good things for me now that she's dead. <laughs> she she uh, kind of liked to fuck my life up all her life, so I can pretend now that she's the mother I always imagined and that she's saying, Darlene, be happy. Don't let yourself have stress anymore. So that's the, the messages I'm pretending she's sending me. And uh, I know, I know I have the right to be happy and I want to be happy and I think it's scary to be happy because I'm still waiting for it to all fall apart because I lived my entire life in a fight or flight mode. That's going away, I'm so excited. So, um, my mother has decided that I need to stop my fabric business for good. I'm not really giving her the credit. It's my decision. But I like to pretend. And I, uh, you know, thought about it right when she died because I was like, you know, I could be free now to do things. But at the time, I just wasn't, I wasn't ready. I wasn't ready until like last November. So just a few months ago that I really decided, hey, I can have a life now and I need to fucking go for that. I need to make changes and just go and start doing things and see how that feels for me. And uh, yeah, it feels good. And I want more of that. So I think it was like maybe, I don't know, a few months ago I had said I was like ending my fabric business, but I still had fabric. So I wanted to sell that. But I really cut it down. I mean, uh, you know, my fabric business was a booming thing that I never expected to get as big as it did. And I cut it down greatly. And I was still selling the fabric that I had on hand, did some clearance sales. But then, you know, I started ordering a little bit here and there because I'm addicted to that. And, uh, and now I've been miserable, miserable thinking about how I would rather go shopping or, uh, you know, just uh, so many different things or doing stuff for myself for videos because I still want to, you know, beef up my YouTube. I want to do crafts. I want to do sewing. I want to, you know, make some shirts and show you guys how I do that. I want to do paper beads, crochet. You know, I've been polishing my nails because those of you who know me, you know I have an issue if my nails aren't polished that I chew the skin around my fingers. I can't have close-up videos of my hands doing crafts if they're fucking chewed up, you know, and it can get bad. I mean, like, you know, they'll be bleeding and sores and healing and skin just peeled off. This finger, I'll peel it all the way to the pad of my finger. That's fucking disgusting. All right. So I don't want anybody to see that. So I've been working really hard at letting them all heal. They're healed. But now, uh, am I doing those kind of videos? No, I don't have time. So I want to do that. And paper beads. I want so much to get back to paper beads. I love making paper beads so much. It's so relaxing for me. And again, I have to have not chewed up fingers to do that. I know it sounds disgusting. Go look it up. Uh, I can't remember the actual name of people who do that. It's all to do with anxiety. I'm also a hair twister, break my hair. So I do all those anxiety things and I don't know, maybe that'll calm down after a while, but uh, I have to keep my nails polished at this point because, you know, I'll be like right away. The nail polish stops me completely. Um, okay, so, uh, yeah, so I let my patrons and YouTube members, I call them my exclusive shoppers, I let them know that fabric business is indeed done. Now, I do still have fabric. I don't want to look at fabric for two weeks other than uh, continuing to work on the two-inch squares king-size quilt top that I'm working on. It's going to give me time to just relax and cut some two-inch squares for that. But I will have stuff to move. So once in a while, if I'm in the mood, I will sell something or I will use the fabric I have for quilt videos, quilt kits, quilt tops, things like that. And then I can sell those when I have the video. It's all going to work. I don't have like a ton of fabric like I used to. So I'm okay with what I have on hand and I'm not worried about that going to waste. Not worried about that at all. So that's the gift my mother is giving me on her one year anniversary of her death. She is inside my head <laughs> telling me I'm making the right choice. I know, I know I am. And now to Danny because this video is uh, about him too. 
uh, and it's a coincidence. It's a coincidence and that it happened today without me knowing. I knew I was going to be sad and upset today. I've been crying all morning. I refuse to cry in this video uh, because I'm really so happy, but I knew I was going to be letting my exclusive shoppers know about my fabric business, and that was making me very, very sad. But I also knew that the minute that was done, I would be able to celebrate uh, another you know, chunk of freedom that is coming my way. And Danny knew that I was going to be doing this today, as did Derek. I talked to Derek all the way home about it. You know, Derek, of course, so supportive. He's like, bah, just please, just do it. Do it. And he wanted me to do it the last time, and he knew I was hanging on to it. And he said, when you're finally ready, you'll finally do it. He says, you're just not quite ready yet. So um, I'm finally doing it. So here's the coincidence. This morning, I noticed Danny had a new post on Facebook, and I knew nothing about this you know he didn't mention anything to be about finding this rock that he found so I just see that he posted that he found a rock a pretty painted rock when people do that they'll just leave rocks different places so people can find them and it made me think of the rock that I found two years ago that Skylar found I take that back it's my rock now she gave it to me but Skylar found it and the story behind that is in a video of when Derek and Skylar came. Skylar came to be with me the summer that I was moving, uh, for, I believe for three weeks. Derek, I believe, came for the full last week of her three-week vacation in Maine. She was there to help me to pack and move things and all that stuff, to you know bring stuff to Goodwill. So I had her for two weeks alone to do a lot of work with me. And then Derek, we had him for the last week. And he was so helpful to end up like cleaning a big part of the cellar and things like that. Well, we had decided that I asked them if they'd like to go to the mountains. I figured it will probably be my last time ever going to the White Mountains, which I went to often because my father was one that just we had to go out every weekend and do stuff. So I got to see a lot of things. And I was surprised that they said yes, because I didn't know at the time was so exhausted not just my usual agony of caring for my mother but also the move but I thought it would be nice to go for a ride but I was just so nervous about so many things so I offered thinking they would say no and I even mention it in that video that I'm going to send you to but boy looking back it, I just can't believe that we did that we had an awesome day together and uh, Skyla found a rock that has suddenly become the most important rock to me ever. <laughs> and uh, this was all triggered by Danny's rock post on Facebook. On a special day where I'm ending my fabric business and I'm pretending my mother's happy for me. <laughs> so during our trip to the mountains, I remembered a tree that there's a picture of me when I was like seven years old standing in a u-shaped tree like two trees connected and I knew like where that was that that picture was taken and I told Derek when we're done and coming back home I want us to go see if that tree still exists and in the video I did mention that I believe I was like 20 or in my 20s I found that tree and took a picture of me I don't know if it was with Derek I don't know I don't know where that picture is I know it's in a photo album somewhere um, as is the one when I was seven. I'll dig them up one of these days. Uh, I, I, I took a picture of that tree, so I knew that tree was still there when I was like 20-something. And I wasn't sure if it would still be there. So we go, we find the tree. Skylar, go, oh, but one, half of the tree is cut off now, so it's not a U anymore, but the, the other side is still there. So I have her go to the tree. I said, I don't care if the tree is cut off uh, one of the sides is cut off I, I want a picture of you in that tree and she finds uh, in the tree uh, uh, a rock a painted rock and she just thought that was so cool but then she gave it to me before they went back uh, to uh, to Mississippi and uh, so I kept the rock and it, I didn't think much of it and then I uh, oh, I have it here I have to remember to show it to you I didn't think of it until today when uh, I saw Danny's rock and I thought, I have a rock. I'm going to get my rock and I'm going to post it on his Facebook in the comments so I can uh, like compete with him. Like, who has the better rock? <laughs> we like to compete over things. And I was like, you know, we'll just, we'll just put it there. Like, I have a rock too. 
I think mine is more special, I really do, and you will too, as soon as you hear the rest of this story. Rock was uh, on like the vanity in the, my storage bathroom. I don't know why it's there, but it's there. And when I went in and I saw what it said, it hit me. That rock was meant for me. It was telling me about my future. So that rock meant so much because it was a tree that I stood in when I was a child and now Skylar is there not only standing in the tree but she finds this rock and gives it to me and uh, I'm going to show you what the rock says on one side. It says for you and get this, get this. Can you fucking believe it says dance? Who would have predicted that that was going to be a huge part of my life here in Mississippi? And I talk about it all the time. It's the most important thing to me for when I go out. I want to dance. This just blows my mind. I mean, it just blows my mind. And I would have never made that connection. I probably wouldn't have really even paid much attention to the rock. I mean, uh, when Skylar gave this to me two years ago, do you think dancing was anywhere in my mind at all? I wanted to survive a fucking move and just be here and rot here. I didn't think I'd ever have any kind of a life. And I got a rock that says dance. And I know that I told Skylar it's in the video somewhere um, that I told her that Grand Pepe sent this to us because my father loved to find things, coins or, you know, something like this. He would have cherished something like this, even if it said dance. You know? So that's my story. And now I want to send you to Danny's Facebook page and I want you to, I'm going to have that linked and I want you to give him a whole bunch of hearts or likes on that post. Just scroll down. You'll see it the one with the rock and then if you open the comments you'll see my comments about the rock and uh and uh, you can tease him and tell him my rock is better <laughs> i'm just kidding but you can leave him a comment just you know be nice i don't want to send people you know assholes to to go uh hijack my friend's post but do go leave him some comments and uh i just the whole uh rocks thing just it blew my mind today so it was it's it's important to me and go show him some love because he is very supportive of what I do and I appreciate that very much I just realized that my air conditioner has been making noise this whole time I hope it's not annoying I think that's about it I'm going to go to Goodwill now and shop and just spend my day any way I feel like it I am going out Monday night to Jeff's house Derek's podcast sidekick so I will not be going anywhere today I need a, a little break and then I'll go out again Monday night and then Friday night so we'll talk about next weekend when it gets here I'm going to link to my video it's uh, when we went on the Kankamagas Highway in New Hampshire and it's a lot of scenery some music you'll see Derek and Skylar you'll see me I was a hot mess in that video uh, I mean I I was, you know, certainly heavier than I am now. I was sweating to death. It was summer, you know. And so, but I don't care. Go go see it. Go see it. I'm getting cuter now, so I don't care if you go see me back then. <laughs> so kidding. Um, uh, go to that video, and even if you don't watch it or whatever, the comments are open on that video now. It has none because I just opened the comments for those. And so you can leave a comment there. Let me know that you uh, at least visited that video. I would appreciate that. And you can watch it. It's not too long. Uh, you know, you might like it. And and you'll see the tree. I believe, I, I'm sure I must have... Did I include pictures of Skylar in that tree? How awful if I didn't. That was the whole point of going there. I don't know. I don't know. Go, go watch it. I'll, I'll watch it too, so I'll know what you're seeing. And then go visit Danny and uh, seriously tell him my rock is better. <laughs> He's giving his back. He's putting it back out there for somebody else to enjoy. I'm not getting rid of my rock. This is, um, this is my little rock forever. I want a constant reminder that dreams can come true. You know, it's only been a few months since I decided I'd like to go out and hope to dance. You know, the first time was New Year's Eve, as a matter of fact. 
and I was like, okay, I, I danced New Year's Eve and it felt so good. So I was like, I gotta keep going out and I gotta keep dancing. And I have that rock to always remind me that I'm, I'm doing the right thing.